<laughs> All right, the video that you're getting ready to watch is us preparing these horses that uh, that were on to take their first ride outside, and uh, we're just out here finishing that ride up now. But uh, you're going to see we started out with uh, opening and closing the gate on the horse that I'm on, and uh, and how uh, what a deliberate process that that was, and how each step mattered. And when, what I did when she wasn't listening, what I did when she was listening. What was your take on what we did out there, Jonathan? Uh, several different exercises from either releasing anxiety, uh, gaining respect and control, um, and not just being a passenger. Okay. Let's turn around and go back up here now. So what do you think that, that uh, not not just being a passenger did for you in, on this horse that you're on? What, did, what changes did you feel in him? Um, my timing was faster and better. Okay. My cues or asks were softer. Why was your timing better? Uh, because I don't, I was able to feel something coming versus an overreaction later. Okay. Uh, as I was, as we were going down earlier, a horse had come up on our backside, mm -hmm. uh, which he knew before I did. And so I felt him brace up, and so I started checking my posture, my position, and my noises, what I'm doing, not realizing there was another energy or animal coming up beside us. But because I was aware and not just sitting back, I was able to soften his chin, get his focus back to us, uh, and, and get that anxiety out of his feet. Softening that chin is a big deal when you, when you feel that energy come up in him and I mean, you can defuse that by, by moving that bit across his tongue just a little bit. There was another horse running off, so you can get the opportunity to do it again, to soften him there a little bit, and get and it goes all the way through his mind and through his feet, and that, and you know, and, and keeps from keeps you from having to just grab him and, and hope you can get him stopped. <laughs> Which I know that's a very big instinct that I, I've caught and that others have is that when we get scared, we want to grab both those reins and pull to our hips and lean back. Yeah. Well, um, when you when you pull, especially when you're riding with a snaffle bit, if you if you just grab those reins and pull back, you collapse that, that bit around their, their bottom jaw for one and it hurts them. So they push up into the pressure because you're hurting them. So. Okay. You know, that's where just getting getting your reins positioned out like this and then moving your fingers side to side will let you soften that soften that face up and, and that, where you can just defuse a lot of negative stuff. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Right before that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, that was a good ride on them. I know you'll enjoy that video and there's a whole lot to be seen. Pay close attention when I'm opening and closing the gate on this horse. Uh, you know that she's she's not a broke by any means, so she, you're going to get to see her avoid what I was wanting and what I did, and when I got her back and and what I did when she she came back into my picture and and uh, I just I just always try to make everything I do with them give them a place to go, let those horses be comfortable doing the thing that I want, and therefore they have a good attitude about doing that. So. Um, I think you'll really enjoy this video and and, uh, and hopefully this will make it a lot safer process for you when you go outside on your horses. Now Dennis here, Capital Training Shoeing. Got Jonathan here with me today. We're, we're on a couple of horses that haven't been ridden a whole lot. You know, they're, they've been ridden enough to where they're guiding around pretty decent. We prepared them in the barn. It's a cool day. Weather change is happening, but we're gonna go ahead and go outside on them anyway. Uh, this horse, I've only opened the gate on her you know, a time or two, so I'm gonna show you how I open the gate to prepare to go outside after we have them prepared in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride up here along beside this, this fence, this gate. And this is the first thing I wanna do is get where I can put my hand on the gate and so where I'm in position to be able to unlatch the gate. The gate was already unlatched here, but this is the first place that I want to have a horse comfortable in. 
you're going to find a lot of times that when you ride up here, that's, the horse wants to avoid that place. So know that that's coming. You know, know that a horse is probably going to not want to just come up here and stand just like this one did. I've, I've shown her that this is a good place to be. That's why she is the way she is. Now, I'm going to ask her right now with my hands keeping her head coming straight out of the saddle. That's the purpose of my hand. So I, I might at times rein her to the right. I might at times rein her to the left. But my purpose is to keep her head and neck coming straight out of the saddle because I want a a side pass to the left one step that's all i'm asking for so i'm going to set up here first she's feeling my right seat bone on the right side of her body my left seat bone is right in the center of her spine now i'm going to close my outside leg my right leg and and i'm going to ask her to move her feet i don't want her backing i just want a lateral step when I felt her start to take more steps, I got on the other side of her body to catch her, okay? Now I'm gonna bring that gate over, and I'm gonna ask for another lateral step to the left. There's the hind end, now, now I need the front end. She's wanting to escape by moving her hind end away. I've got my left foot against her to keep that hind end from leaving. And hold her right there, okay? And then we'll set it up again. She was trying to avoid me by moving her hip out of the picture and she was going to back out the door there and leave me where I couldn't handle the gate. Ideally, you want to be able to ride up to a gate and, and keep your hand on the gate and then navigate your horse without any effort and, and, and keep your hand on the gate. But in the, in the beginning when I'm teaching them, I'm thinking about body alignment and positioning more important than the gate. Okay. I'm going to get another step to the to the left. There, that's a good step. I'll let her just sit here. Bring that gate. I've closed my left leg. That's good. Now I've got enough room to get out of this gate. So I'm going to back her up, and I want to form a T with that gate. I want to. I want her front end to go left. I want her hind end to go right. She's not giving me her hind end. She, she gave it to me too much that time, so I want her. I want to take that hind end back over. She's pushing into my leg instead of giving me her hind end to the to the left. So up there, we'll get that hind end over there. Now I'm gonna wait. So she. She ran through a boundary. I got her back off the boundary. She's between my legs again and in a position. I'm I'm 20 feet away from the gate. So what? I'm, I've got a I've got a definite place that I need her to be. I need her to to listen to me. Come up here, and I'm I'm still after forming that T. So I want to be. And caught her on my left side and she's moving her hip to the left. I didn't ask her to. That was her just blowing out of there. Okay. This is the position I, I wanted to come from. So I, I went from being parallel with the gate back around to forming that T where I'm the top part of the T and that the gate's the, the bottom part. And then most important here is this resting place right here. She took me off over there in, in resistance. I didn't let her win over there. I, I kept her between my legs and got that ironed out and then came back here to a resting place. Now then I want her to bring her front end to the left. Her hind end needs to go to the right. And she can come around and now she's in position to back straight up but to stay parallel with that gate. She's too far away from it so I'm on my left side Moving her hip over to the right. Now I'm going to ask her to back up. She's pushing into my left leg. I need her to stay right there so I can have control of this gate. But mainly what I want here is for her to quit pushing on my leg and get between my legs and let me have a place where I can give her that complete release. Ask her to back up. That's nice. Now I'm going to ask for a lateral step to the left. C 
caught her on my left side here and gonna get her back over to the gate. Okay, now I'm gonna just set her here and reward her for letting me open and close that gate. Now I'm gonna open it up so Jonathan can just ride his horse on out and we're gonna go out here and ride. Now, right outside of the barn here, you're gonna see We're in a parking lot situation here, and uh, this is an opportunity. As soon as Jonathan gets out here, start riding. Is he resisting, Jonathan? Uh, he was showing anxiety. When you were walking away, his feet started moving. So okay. That's good. Jonathan said when I when I walked away, that horse got a little anxious, so he put him to work back here. And I think that's a good thing. So put him, put him to work a little bit more. I'll just stay right here in the gate. And we don't want to go out on a horse that, that is anxious. We want to be in complete control. Shorten your bridle reins up a little bit, Jonathan, so you can ride him with your fingertips and not your not your arm so much. Now move your fingertips, so, so turn your... Uh, your wrist up and your palms down and move your fingers. That'll soften his face. <laughs> I thought she wanted back in the barn, so I'm gonna go back out here. Okay, now then look out here and come on out here with me. So out here, don't don't head out in the wide open. We're gonna stay here in this little enclosed area and ride him just like if you was doing in the barn there. So it'd probably be a good place to take his head around to one side, Jonathan, and get busy with your inside foot. And take his hip around there a little bit more. Stay right in there with it. Lean back a little bit. You're leaning forward too much. Stay back, look around at his hip. There. He's going in too small of a circle. That's, it needs to be there. Now then move his hip around. There. Now go with it. See? When you get in too tight of a circle, they're just, they're just trying to avoid you by coming closer all the time. When you're out there, you're riding that horse forward. You're, you're the one that's in authority. Feel the change in that? Now let's go left and do the same thing. A circle too small doesn't help you here. Take that left hand further to the left. That's it. And see, he's got both reins off of the neck, and he's able to bring that head around to the left without having a rein on the neck, not having to bind him up. In, we're not trying to do a one rein stop here. We're trying to just get this horse shaped up in a in a in a banana shape to the left and get that nice willing forward motion in a position where you've got his power taken away by putting him in that banana shape. <laughs> now his attitude changed completely, didn't it? Yeah. Now we can head out to the wide open. Go up ahead of me, Jonathan, and do the same thing right up, right up there. I'd take him back up to that trot if you can. That, that trot's going to be a useful gait. Bump a little more with that right leg. Move that bit across his tongue and he'll soften up. Shorten your bridle reins up just a little bit again. Bring his head around just a little bit more. Set up and look out a little further. There you go. Don't bring his head further. See, that'll bring him in a, a too small of a circle. Stay out wide. There you go. Now then, go straight and change direction. I like that. When you, <laughs> when you went straight there, he slowed down. That, that's a good thing.
bump him a little bit with that left leg and soften that rib up on the inside there a little bit. Move that bit across his tongue and soften his jaw. Look straight, go straight. If he slows down again, like he did, just let him be slow. Now let's walk on down the driveway. That's a whole lot better than one dragging you down the driveway, ain't it? Yes, sir. It's amazing how much of a change you can feel from that tension and that anxiety in their, in their body and their feet. And just a little bit of movement yeah. gets it out. Yeah, Jonathan was mentioning it's amazing how much change you can feel and the anxiety that they're sending up through the saddle into your body through their feet. And when you direct those feet around, you soften the body while you're coming around, they just let down and relax and, and let you, you know, have a good good position on them and, and their attitude changes, then we can soften up and everybody's happy that way. Yeah, I think both of them are doing pretty well out here. You know, that's the first time for them to be out here. <laughs> not too, too upset about anything. We'll go down here at the end of the driveway and, and go through that entrance way. Sometimes that's a little bit of a precarious place. The horses, when they get to that entrance and they look through, they all of a sudden see stuff on the other side of the entrance that they can't see from this side. And just see what their attitude's like. And we got horses coming up here on our, on our right right now. And sometimes they'll just all of a sudden bust out of here running and our horses might want to go with them, but we'll just stay right in there with them. Yes, yeah, it just keeps softening this there. That bring them feet down by moving your hands like that. There's what I was talking about. Then they go busting off out of there and try to get us to join in with them. <laughs> So why is it that when I'm doing that softening to get him to relax a little bit, I get better results with that than I do just grabbing both and pulling? Well, Jonathan wanted to know why he got better results in softening than he did just grabbing and pulling. They they become real defensive, especially when you get a little bit in their mouth and you pull straight back with both both sides. They that that bit you know and hurts. But if you just move that bit lightly across their tongue, that, that produces a sensation that, that doesn't scare them, doesn't hurt them, and they'll, they'll just soften up to it.